Aloha, beautiful souls. Welcome to A Better World with Adrian. Welcome to your landing pad for leadership, for transformation, for joy, for alchemy, your spiritual home to unlock the real you. This episode is really important because I'm speaking into something that comes up again and again and again and again in my life, in my clients' lives, and in just this idea of the hero's journey that you're on as a spiritual creator, as a spiritual leader who's anchoring light for a better world. And it's all about resistance, obstacles, and spiritual initiations. So I am recording this episode on the day of the new moon total solar eclipse in Aries in April 2024. And it's a very, very important day and time. It's a major new beginning in the sign of the sacred warrior. Aries starts the whole zodiac. Aries is the sacred warrior. It's the leader. It's going first. And all of us who are leading for new earth, must embody the hero's journey in some way. And when you are on the hero's journey, when you are on the path of your spiritual life, which includes your leadership, like there's no way to have a spiritual life without having some sort of role as a spiritual leader. Now, whether or not you step into that role fully is totally in your free will, whether or not you fully, you know, attain and live and create your potential in that role is up to you and your free will. However, there's no way to walk a spiritual life and a spiritual path without being on a hero's journey. And here's the thing that I also believe. I believe that people who don't consciously choose a hero's journey or the spiritual path in this lifetime, this lifetime is preparing them for future lifetimes when they will be able to walk a more spiritual path if that's their, their dharma. So this is a very important episode. People must orientate themselves correctly to resistance, must orient themselves correctly to obstacles, must orient themselves correctly to spiritual initiations. Otherwise, it can throw you way off course in your spiritual path. You can interpret it as something that it's not. You can get way, you know, spinning around, around, around in things that are unhelpful and honestly optional. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm excited for this episode and it's really landing for me in my life right now. And I imagine it's landing in your life too. With eclipse season, the eclipses are sudden faded change. And so a lot of resistance, obstacles, and initiations are happening across the board for myself, for my clients, for spiritual leaders everywhere. So I'm really, really excited to dive into this episode with you today. So let us call upon the altar. If you are new here at A Better World with Adrian, I set an altar for every deep dive episode. This is an ancient code. This is a ritual. This is a ceremony of saying thank you in advance. Thank you, thank you, thank you, spirit, in advance for this chance to serve and to share this transmission and channel this message for the collective. I have on the altar today, and I will share them to the video, Maui roses, okay? I have a white, a dark red, a yellow, a bright pinkish orange, and another deep, deep, deep dark red rose here on the altar. And I will tell you, you can probably hear me smelling them <laughs> in the microphone. I've never smelled such amazing smelling roses ever in my life. And I've bought roses for myself or flowers for myself every week for at least two years straight, at least two years straight. Um, I've never smelled anything like a Maui rose and roses are the highest frequency flower 
I have all of the colors that are aligned with this Aries solar eclipse energy. We have red, orange, and yellow, which is the bottom three chakras. We have the root chakra, which is safety, stability. We have the solar, we have the sacral, which is creativity, sexuality, and the inner child. And we have the solar plexus, which is your power. Okay. We have a white rose, Christ consciousness, the angelic realm. Okay. And this is from the Aina. This is from the Aina, which means land here on Maui. These are very, very special roses. I was guided to this rose person at the farmer's market. I've heard about them for months and months and months and always missed them. And then, oh my gosh, I found them. And then there's a crazy story that I might tell one day um, about when I was buying these roses, but they're very, very, very special. Um, so roses are the highest frequency flower. They are unconditional love, unconditional love, unconditional love. So that is on the altar today. We have an unscented white candle burning, purifying the space, calling it all healed ancestors and guides to support us in this transmission. I am wearing all white in celebration of the eclipse. I always wear all white on a solar eclipse and I wear all black on a lunar eclipse because for a solar eclipse, the sun goes out, we must be the sun. So I'm wearing all gold jewelry and white to be the sun. And then for a lunar eclipse, I wear black. Um, because we're called to be the moon. However, today I'm being the sun and my Leo sun is so happy to be that. I have three Ganeshas on the altar, the remover of obstacles. May you remove obstacles to understanding, to love, to peace, to bliss in this transmission and finally, I have all of my beautiful golden citrine crystals on the altar representing prosperity for all, limitless, lavish abundance, the golden heart of the sun, and passion, 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 as the royalty of spirit you are. So thank you, thank you, thank you, spirit. And now you and me, dear listener, you and all of us, to the people receiving this transmission, we will take our three deep breaths together. So whether you are walking, whether you are driving your car, whether you are sitting, drinking a cup of tea, whether you are dancing, whether you are, you know, doing anything in your life, I invite you to stop and take deep breaths with us. And if you feel the call, close your eyes. This connects our spirits together. Inhale through the nose. Feel everything from the day leading up to this point. Exhale out the mouth. Let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. Inhale through the nose. This time, pausing on your heart space, filling it with golden light, filling it with love, filling it with red, with orange, with everything of the fiery passion of what you believe in. Exhale out the mouth. Inhale through the nose. This time, I want you to breathe into any part of your body that you have tightness, any part of your body that you have rigidity, any part of your body where there is resistance and allow your life force to open up that part of your body, knowing that your body comes first and then the mind will follow. Exhale out the mouth. And now we are connected. You can blink open your eyes if you close them. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the official transmission resistance obstacles and spiritual initiations on your hero's journey. So I got this download for this episode maybe a week ago during meditation. And then this whole morning, like I said, I'm recording this on the day of the solar eclipse in Aries. And I've been in deep ceremony all day. I got up super, super early because the eclipse technically 
it's not just the height of the eclipse when it happens. There's a whole, there's a whole, I believe it was six hour window today. So I was up at four and then I was just in deep ceremony till almost 11. And this came through really, really strong. It's like, this gets to be said, this gets to be heard. And this is something that people don't talk about a lot. And so this is actually so cosmically aligned for me and where this eclipse is happening for me. And by the way, the Aries solar eclipses are part of a three eclipse series. We had the first solar eclipse in Aries in 2023 in April. Now we have the second one in 2024 in April. And we're going to have another one solar eclipse in Aries next April, April 2025. So this is the second chapter in the three-part story. Um, and for me, Aries is my 12th house. 12th house is the mystic, is the subconscious, it's meditation, it's the quantum realm, it's psychic, it's literally spirituality. And the 12th house is the unseen, it's healing, it's retreat. Um, it actually is the house of secret lovers as well. So who knows what's about to happen over here? Um, I'm meant to lead in the spiritual realm, especially in things that a lot of people don't talk about. And I really got that download so strongly um, during this eclipse is just like, talk about what people don't talk about. Talk about what people don't talk about. And people don't talk about resistance, obstacles, or spiritual initiations that much, okay? And I really, my intention with this episode is to give you a different lens on resistance, give you a different lens on obstacles and give you a different lens on spiritual initiations so you can recognize them. So you don't misdiagnose them and get way off track off your dharma, way off into some human distortion and you, you can stay the course on your hero's journey. So let's dive into it. If you've been feeling resistance, if you've been like, holy shit, eclipse season is like, I don't even know what's happening right now this episode is going to serve you so greatly. <laughs> so let's talk about resistance. Something that is true about resistance, and I see a lot of distortions with this in the spiritual space, specifically with women, specifically with women. It's like, oh, I have so I have resistance to that. I have resistance to that. And it's like, it's almost like I'm too fragile. I can't handle this resistance. Okay. And I was lifting in the gym the other day and I just got this major download. Um, do not expect to get stronger without resistance. Don't expect to get stronger without resistance. It's this weird thing that people have constructed in their minds to stay in their comfort zone where they're like, oh yeah, I'm on the path. Like I'm going to rise. I'm going to build the dream, blah, 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 blah. And then it's like resistance shows up because that's how you develop strength and they bolt. And that's a misdiagnosis of the situation. Resistance should be celebrated and leaned into as your greatest teacher and your greatest strength builder. Like if I go to the gym and I lift the same weight, that's super easy for me again and again and again and again and again my muscle is not going to grow. My muscle is not going to grow. And in fact, my muscle will probably atrophy because I'm not using it. So not only are you not going to grow, but you're probably going to go backwards and get weaker. Okay. So do not expect to get stronger without resistance. And if you're on the hero's journey, a hero is about being strong. A hero is strong. A hero goes out and does the thing that most people will not, okay? And that's the difference between a leader and a follower and the difference between someone who makes a dream and someone who has a dream is a willingness to do what most people will not, which is get uncomfortable, which is lean into resistance. Like if I'm at the gym and I'm lifting something heavy, I don't want it to be easy. I want it to challenge me. And that's actually the core of the human spirit. Humans are happiest when they're progressing. Humans are happiest when they're rising through challenge. So 
when you meet resistance, celebrate it. You're like, oh, I'm on my path of growth, baby. And do not expect to get stronger without resistance. So one place, like when I lead breath work for my clients, a lot of resistance shows up in the body. And the reason why breath work is such a game changer um, is because not only does it, do you move through resistance and clear out your whole nervous system, you show yourself that you move through resistance no matter what. And so you build self-trust with yourself. You build an identity. You build an identity that I'm someone who gets stronger through resistance. And I choose to move through res resistance every single time. If I had to narrow it down to one thing that blocks people from living their dream and their truth and their destiny and their leadership, it's they meet resistance and they chicken out. They don't keep going. And it's like, it hurts my soul to see because I'm like, oh my God, you literally just found the doorway to your dream and you just ghosted. What? <laughs> so yeah, resistance. Do not expect to get stronger without resistance. Do not expect to become the person your dream requires you to be without resistance, without moving with and through and strengthening through resistance. So let's talk about the difference between force and resistance, because some people will be like forcing things like bam, 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 bam. I'm just going to force it until and make it happen. And honestly, this is a worthwhile pursuit many times. I don't know if I love the word force, but I love the word relentless. Like I am relentless. I'm relentless. Like I decided that my dreams are happening and I'm relentless. Like, like, I don't know how exactly they're going to happen. I don't know. Like, I don't know the orchestration spirit has planned for me. Of course I don't, um, because I would probably sabotage it if I did, because you know, I am a human, um, being relentless. Like I said to somebody the other day, I was like, I don't care how many times they cut off my head, I'll grow it back. That's being relentless. That's being a spiritual warrior. That's full commitment to your hero's journey, right? So the difference between forcing something and resistance, force is This is very similar to the idea of, you know, the difference between surrender and quitting. And this comes with age. This comes with wisdom. This comes with experience. So I guess one example that's just coming to mind for me is like my one of my previous partners, like I knew a long time before we actually broke up that it wasn't right, that something wasn't right. And I couldn't figure it out. I, I couldn't, you know, my human mind was just like, yo, he's this, he's that. Like, like he's everything you've ever wanted. What is the problem? And, and I forced it. I forced it for years. I forced it in therapy. I forced it in all these. Well, by the way, I drug this person to therapy. <laughs> but there's a difference between resistance and force. Force is when you are asserting yourself, like trying to take 100% control of the situation and going against your inner knowing, okay? By the way, none of this is possible to discern if you don't have a regulated nervous system. So if you're walking around with trauma you haven't dealt with, you will not be able to know these subtleties. That's why not only is breath work important just on its own, consistent breath work, consistent nervous system reset, okay? The difference between force and resistance is resistance is like, I have met something that's going to make me stronger, okay? And deep down, I know it's correct. This is the same thing that happens with so many of my clients and structure, they have so much resistance to structure and planning and discipline. And it's like deep down, they know discipline will help them. Deep down, they know 
structure is what their next level is and they have so much resistance to it, okay? That's not forcing. Forcing is, hey, like I know I'm in my soul, this isn't correct for some reason, but I keep banging my head against a wall and I don't know why. Um, this happened the first time I ever opened my membership. It was called Prana Moon Portal. And it got to the point where I was literally bleeding in like cash flow in my business. I was like, I was spending like way more just to run the membership than I was in in the revenue it was creating like and I finally got to a certain point because I you know I'm very stubborn <laughs> sometimes and it got to the point where I was like what would a CEO do and that was the moment where I surrendered and I stopped trying to force it I was like this isn't resistance this isn't me trying something once and then quitting. This is like me trying to assert my human timeline on this when it's for whatever reason, it's not correct. And so I let it go and it was really hard, but it's, there's a huge difference between force and resistance. And a lot of people think that a lot of people confuse them. And a lot of people I would say 99% of the time it's resistance and you just have not developed the muscle of identifying resistance, meeting it with grace and strength and letting it be hard and letting it be the thing that makes you stronger. Okay. So the other thing about resistance, I really want to say is that you will have the most resistance to the things that will change your life the most. You will have the most resistance to the things that will change your life the most. So I notice this a lot with my clients with health, like health habits, like working out, water, the way they eat, all of that. Like they know they want to be healthier. They know that all of these things will work and they have incredible resistance to it. Why is that? Because they know deep down it's going to change everything and that means things are going to be different. Things are going to be uncertain. And they're scared as fuck at a cellular level for things to change. So they don't go through it. And then what do they do? They turn around and they miss their destiny doorway because they turned around at resistance. If the doorway to your destiny had a word on it, it would be resistance. This is the threshold to unlocking the doorway to your destiny timeline. Too many people mistake it for a reason to quit. Too many people mistake it for, oh, I'm forcing something that's not meant to be. No, the resistance is there to strengthen you and to initiate you through into the other side so you can actually walk your hero's journey. That's what it is. And people misidentify resistance. And then people very childishly see resistance. They know it's what they need and they choose not to do it. Well, you know what that is? That's not a leader. Okay. And at the very least, you are the leader of your own life, my love. So resistance is actually a very, very, very important part of the hero's journey of a spiritual life. And if you are going to contribute here on earth in a meaningful, positive way. So that's resistance. Breathwork is the game changer for moving through resistance for me, for my clients, for literally everything. So yeah, resistance, first thing. Do not expect to get stronger without resistance. That is called... a false reality. Like it's just, it's just a false narrative that exists to keep you comfortable, honestly. And resistance is there to make you stronger. So if you want to be strong, if you want to move forward and just like live this life full out, you not only must move through resistance. You must identify it. You must celebrate it and you must honor it. Like when you see resistance, humble bow, humble warrior. Like, here we go. I have so much resistance to this. 
And I'm going to fucking do it because it's going to make me stronger and it's going to open my destiny doorway. Okay. Next thing is obstacles. Okay. Resistance and obstacles are different in my opinion. Resistance is like, oh, like I have a lot of resistance to this new way of living. I have a lot of resistance to this new way of being. Like I have a lot of resistance to this thing I know will change my life. Okay. An obstacle is something that's divinely orchestrated to challenge you. And it's, this is more divinely orchestrated. It's not like, it's not like a choice that you're making. Oh, like I have a, I have a lot of resistance to daily habits, um, but I'm going to choose to move through them. No, an obstacle is like, Spirit puts something big, puts a big boulder in your path. And you're like, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> so I'm going to share some examples from my journey lately because I was set out on a whole new hero's journey when I went to move to Maui. And um, it's very interesting because around this time last year, which was the first solar eclipse in Aries, which was in my 12th house, of meditation and spirituality and the quantum and the mystic and you know behind the scenes I started realizing I I was like okay I know I'm going to move to Maui one day one day one day you know little did I know three months later and my whole life would be packed up and I'd be you know, having two suitcases on my way across the world. <laughs> but an obstacle is something that spirit puts in your path. It's a boulder. And you are meant to move through it. It's 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 not resistance. It's a challenge. It's it's very different than resistance. So an obstacle is divinely orchestrated. And in my opinion, there's three reasons and purposes to an obstacle okay the first one is a skill set there's a skill set you're supposed to get from this obstacle I don't know what it is maybe it's um a, a spiritual skill set maybe it is a 3d skill set maybe it is um a relating skill set maybe it's a communication skill set but there's some kind of skill set that this boulder got put in your path for which by the way if you think about the hero's journey like how boring would like any movie or epic tale be if there was no obstacle, right? Like I think about, I've thought about that many times, like as I've encountered obstacles, which best believe I've encountered resistance, obstacles, and initiations, um, big time, big time. <laughs> um, an obstacle, you're supposed to gain a skill set. And the thing is, if you haven't been moving through resistance, you're not going to be strong enough to handle the obstacles, okay? These things come in a row. Resistance, obstacles, spiritual initiations. They might come through all at once. But here's the thing. If a big-ass boulder from God gets put in your path, an obstacle, and you have not been actively leaning into resistance to get strong, oh, don't expect to navigate that obstacle well. Do not expect to rise. We do not rise to our expectations. We fall to the level of our training. Archilochus said that, and truer words have never been spoken. So if you are not constantly doing resistance training, you will never be able to move through obstacles. Like, you will not. So, that, and that's not my opinion. That's like, I've experienced that by witnessing my life, by witnessing my clients' lives, by, you know, coaching musicians for 15 plus years on how to play well in high pressure situations. We don't care about rising to meet the occasion. We care about training so that even our worst day, we can win. That's the vibe, all right? So an obstacle is a big ass boulder from God. Okay, and it was chosen for you. It has your name on it. <laughs> and it's you're you're here, here to build a skill set through the obstacle. The second purpose of an obstacle is to see how much you want it and if you're fully committed. 
I know in every fiber of my being that God, the stars, source, spirit puts boulders in our path to weed out the people who are not meant for the hero's journey and to really just be like, yeah, um, like checking, like how bad do you want it? Are you committed? Are you committed? And a lot of people talk about tests, like it's a spiritual test. I believe in those and they come in the form of obstacles. Okay. Um, and then the third reason that an obstacle occurs is it's to sharpen you for the long game. It's very Saturnian. Okay. Obstacles are not things that get fixed overnight. It's about discipline. It's about fortitude. It's about the long game. It's about truly stepping in and that full commitment. Cause it's like floaty mystics bolt at obstacles or they try it for like two days and they're like, oh, I tried blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, you're not committed. You don't actually care that much. Like you don't want it that bad. That's why obstacles come in our path. So I'm going to tell you about my ops, one major obstacle I had since, since coming to Maui. My hair is so voluptuous today. It's like the, the Leo main volume is, is turned all the way up. Um, I digress. I, so the car situation here on Maui has been a major obstacle. Okay. And it all started, I got here and I got the rental car and I had no idea what the car vibe was here. It's, 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 it's a whole thing. People, a lot of people own cars, they rent them out. It's like, there's a lot of transition on the island. So people are always like renting, buying, selling, like all these things with cars. It's like very weird. And then cars are like more hard to come by because it's literally an ocean in the middle of the Pacific. So I got here and I got my, my rental car and literally a week later, I lost my license. I lost my driver's license. I couldn't find it anywhere. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, I can't, first of all, a good thing I like this car because I can't get another car without a license. Second of all, I can't buy a car without a driver's <laughs> license. And so I went through this whole obstacle of with cars of getting, getting my car, get first getting my license, which is this whole thing with like the state of Illinois wouldn't send me a duplicate unless I did all these things. And it was like, you couldn't do it online. You had to snail mail it and I couldn't pay online. I had to like order checks from the mainland because there's no mainland banks out here. And, um, so it was like this whole thing. And I was just like, I got in my meditation one day, like, oh yeah, we hid your license on purpose. And I'm like, great. great. <laughs> so it was this obstacle and it was like, yeah, girl, you want to be on Maui? How bad do you want it? Are you committed to being here? Are you going to be one of those people who comes and then leaves? Because that's another thing is like the land here tests people. Like the land here will really, really test you. And people say, like, if you, st if you can stay here two years, you can stay. Like the energy is very intense. I joke around that like I moved and my life is like an ayahuasca trip. Like, like I feel like I'm in an altered state a lot of the time and I don't take any substances and it's like even not doing breath work I feel like that that's just like the energy of this place it's like I'm living in another dimension but I had this whole obstacle with cars and then and then I finally get my license and I'm able to switch it over I have a Hawaii license I'm like amazing then I get in a fender bender and I'm like yo what the fuck and I'm like this like other car obstacle and then you know come to find out the person that I was renting from didn't have the car insured when they told me it was and it was this whole thing and I was just like wow and so I'm still
still going through it. Like I have a car, it just needs repairs. And so I'm just honoring this obstacle. I'm just like, okay, spirit put this boulder here. I'm meant to move the boulder. I meant to move the boulder. Okay. And you know, I'm committed. And that's what I was talking about uh, with my friend when I shared the opening to this podcast, when I said like, Hey, they can cut my head off as many times as they want. I'll keep growing it back. I was talking about the car stuff. It's like, I'm relentless. Like I will, I will have my Molly car. Everything will be amazing. And I'll move through whatever obstacle I'm meant to move through. But it's so interesting too, because, um, you may notice a theme with obstacles in your life. I've had like, I've had a lot of things happen in cars <laughs> with cars, um, messages and, you know, times when I really touched and tapped spirit and my spirituality and like where I'm meant to go have been really related to cars. So that's another thing you can pay attention to is like, is there a pattern in how obstacles show up in my life? Okay. The obstacle is the way. The obstacle is the way, my friend. So you're moving through resistance. You've got your obstacles on your hero's journey, making it a fun story, making it interesting, right? Um, and then, you know, spiritual initiations. So how is a spiritual initiation different from resistance, different from obstacles? So resistance comes up with things you know are going to change your life for the better, um, and it's your job to lean into that and let that strengthen you, okay? And know that your subconscious is having a major freak out that everything's going to change. And that's why you run away from resistance and you got to run toward it through your destiny doorway, remember? And then obstacles are the boulders from God. Like, you shall not pass. It's very Saturn. <laughs> It's like, yeah, I'm putting this hard thing in your way on purpose because I want to see how committed you are. I want you to gain a skill set and I want you to show me that you're in it for the long game. Like, do you really want it or is it something that you said you want, but you don't actually want because you're not willing to do the work? Okay. I literally went to the DMV and waited in line day after day after day because here's the other thing about Maui. Sometimes people just don't like answer their phone or sometimes people just like close for no reason. And you're like, it's a Tuesday. Why is the DMV closed? And you'll go and it'll be like a handwritten note that says like out to lunch or something like that or be back in a couple of days. And it's like, that would never happen where I'm from. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, obstacle. And the obstacle is the way. So spiritual initiation is something that you are put through to sharpen you into your next level of this game that we call life and the hero's journey. So a lot of people mistake it for a sign you are on the wrong path or something's not meant for you, but you're just being initiated. You're just being initiated. Okay. And so it involves some, it always involves a lesson, a loss, and an integration before you can reach the next stage of your journey, okay? It's those three things every time with an initiation. It's a lesson, a loss, and an integration. And so it might be a deepening of a lesson you, you once had before, but the loss is very, very real. This is like when people talk about an ego death or some people will refer to it as a shamanic death where you feel like literally everything in my life is fucking like broken or like falling apart. If you listen to my relentless intuition episode, it's called relentless intuition, um, moving to Maui, the story about moving to Maui. Like I went through a whole initiation where literally everything in my life felt like it was dying. And I was like, um, what the actual fuck is happening right now? Um, it was a major initiation. It was a major kick in my ass. Um, like all roads had to lead to Maui at a certain point. Spirit boxed me in. <laughs> so 
that was an initiation in itself, but it's always these lessons and a major loss of like some previous version of you. And for me, this, and it usually comes in threes. They always say that, right? It comes in threes. So, you know, my major obstacle, I guess I would say, like there's been a lot of obstacles with just like setting up my 3D life here on an island. Like, like I just had no idea, you know? Just the things you don't know when you move somewhere you've never been, all right? By the way, things are like 10 years behind out here in in like a lot of stuff, like in mindset for sure, but in like just products and it just it's, it's hard to explain, but um, <clears throat> they usually come in threes. It's a lesson and a loss and an integration before you can reach the next stage. And so I'll share with you that I've had a meet a lot of initiations here on Maui that have brought me to my fucking knees. Like, 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 did I just ruin my whole life moving out here? Like, what is going on? Like being in that deep, just like, yeah, just like on your knees in an initiation. And it usually comes in threes. And for me, it came in men, gossip, and money. So I hadn't really dated that much in Chicago. And because I knew my husband didn't live there, I dated like, obviously, like I almost married someone there, but um, I hadn't dated in a while, like seriously at all, because I was like, my husband doesn't even live here. I just want to focus on my business. Um, I'll do I'll maybe date for fun a little bit. But like, mostly it was like, Hey, when I'm traveling, I'm like travel Adrian and I meet these like amazing men and we, you know, have fun times together. And, but here I felt very open because I know that my husband lives here. I have, I don't know if I've met him yet, but, um, there's three men in a row and it all started the week that I got here. And it was like, I had been out of the game for so long and, you know, it was really me being initiated into my deep discernment, my boundaries, and this acknowledgement of like, hey, I'm a totally different person now. And because I'm so, because I'm a totally different person, and because I'm in these different roles as a leader, and, um, you know, my energy and my shamanism and my spirituality is the most important thing in my life my standards get to rise. And so it was like very interesting because all three of these men were like far and away, like light years, light years, light years ahead of anybody I have ever dated before um, in terms of consciousness and just like that soul connection. Um, and I was called into deep, deep, deep discernment about what I believe what I get to have. And then also like when you break up with someone, you run into them all the time on the island. And so I was like, I dated these three people. I stopped dating these three people. And now I see them all the time. And it was this major initiation for me getting initiated back into romance and back into being that queen and that like sexual energy um, with other people. And that was a major, major initiation for me. And it was deeply disorienting, it was deeply disorienting. Um, the other thing was gossip, like there, there. Um, so this is very related to my Chiron, but it is a lot easier. It was a lot easier for me to be a mystic in Chicago in some ways, because <clears throat> I was just like an undercover mystic, right? People weren't seeing me, noticing me, any of that stuff really in my day-to-day -day life. Here, everyone and their mom calls themselves a healer. Here, everyone else, everyone and their mom calls themselves like, like it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. And so people here see me and I'm a woman in my power 
I live in my full power. I shine my bright light. I take no prisoners. There's a lot of wounded feminine energy on this island. And I have been gossiped about a lot, a lot. And I've activated people a lot because I'm in my power. And, you know, in Chicago, nobody thought, really thought twice about that because it's a very masculine city. And it's like, yeah, she's just, I mean, I did activate people there, of course, but it was totally different um, because the people here, you know, they claim to be spiritual sisters or whatever. And it's like, it's just all an illusion. And so that was a deep initiation for me, especially with my Chiron being in the third house. I've been gossiped about and given to the patriarchy in past lives again and again and again and again and again. And it was a deep, a deep initiation. And that's where I really come to the loss part because I was grieving. I, th I was like, okay, you are you came here, you have your soul fam, you have your in-person soul family, like the thing that you always thought could never be like, here it is. And then this started happening and I just received major, major, um, downloads from spirit during this initiation of like, you're not supposed to be their friend. You're here to lead. And some of the most important leadership you will do is be seen by people who will never be your client, would, ne would never like live the way you live, who would never um, do what you do, who just don't get it and who will talk mad shit. And you are meant to be seen by them. That's how you're supposed to lead. You're supposed to show them another way because what's on the inside of all that gossip, desire and judgment, judgment, because anytime we judge someone else, we judge that part of ourselves. And so I was put through a major initiation of like where I'm going in my leadership, I'm going to be a lot more visible and I can't allow gossip to take me out. I can't let, you know, it's really easy for people to pull you off course on this island because the there's a serious lack of ambition on this island. I I love this place. This is my home. This is the most abundant place on earth. I'm so deeply grateful to be here. And at the same time, there's a really um, unhelpful, <laughs> I guess, and strong programming and culture with a lot of the spiritual people that live here and so I was put through that major initiation and and it's so funny I actually had somebody say to me like last week they were like yeah when I first met you I didn't like you at all and in my mind I'm like yeah I know I'm psychic <laughs> yeah. but it's like I have nothing to prove to them you know I'm here to live my life to lead, to work with the people that I'm meant to work with and, you know, be friends with a few people, like a few really close people. And I have those people here on Maui and, and I'm grateful for them. So, and then the third thing was money, money. I, I had a major initiation and if you know anything about me and my journey, like money has been a huge part of my spiritual awakening. Like I used to be completely broke, classical musician. I went through this whole thing. I worked with a lot with Victoria Washington in the House of Wealth Embodiment. If you don't know her work, go check her out. Um, and I took myself all the way to multi six figures building a business uh, on music. And then I added in my mystical, you know, breath work, astrology, coaching, spiritual mentorship, shamanism to it. And I did not realize how cutting edge all of that stuff still is until I got here. And I started, I was like, oh, maybe I'll teach piano lessons on the island. Like that would be so fun to bring mindful music here. 
I bet people would really love it because they're like doing like in general, people here are very spiritual. And I was just so excited and lit up by this idea. And, you know, my spiritual business comes first, of course. Um, everything is spiritual business, honestly. But I went through this major initiation of like people, you know, just getting like 20 or 30 no's. Even when I like, I was like, okay, maybe I'm just not, I'm hitting the market incorrectly. Like I'll adjust my rate this, I'll adjust my rate that, but it's like people not wanting to invest in real, in, in that regard. And then having all these crazy money programmings that literally like, I, 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 I was like, taken aback and I didn't realize like oh you've been in like the online spiritual space a lot you've been you know you created your own ecosystem in Chicago with mindful music and I just like I couldn't believe I could not believe um the scarcity programming and then and then like this whole idea of I literally had somebody the other day, they were like, oh yeah, I'm, I do it all for free. I don't charge because, you know, I, you know, money is just, it's not right. And I literally looked at them and I was like, this is why we haven't made a better world. And then I walked away because I was like, I can't have it. Like, I just couldn't believe this programming and how strong it is here. And so I went through a whole initiation of like, really deepening my nervous system, deepening my belief, deepening my knowing, deepening my hell yes, my holy yes, and all of the, the work that I've done around money to be unfuck withable. Because now guess where I'm anchored? I'm not anchored in one of the biggest cities of the world where people like where there's all this capital flowing. And let's be real, there's a lot of capital flowing on Maui, like a lot um but just the mindsets and especially in the spiritual space like I was shocked to my core you guys I was shocked to my core and so that was the major initiation for me and it was like I grieved all of these things the men the gossip and all this like scarcity and I know these are all initiations for me because where I'm going I can't I got to have my discernment at an all time high. I can't be thrown off by random suitors, <laughs> random spiritual suitors. You know, people are going to talk shit about me my whole career and that's fine. And I got another initiation of that this time specifically by spiritual women and I moved through it. And now, you know, it's like, I keep getting, it's like, I have this like spiritual um, metal armor on and it just keeps getting stronger with these these initiations and then with the money stuff it's like I've never felt more um, just unshakable and how important all of that is like there's a reason why I've worked through it there's a reason why I help every single one of my clients work through it to go from this broke healer mentality to a wealthy mystic that's actually going to serve the world. And I've just never felt more rooted in the purpose of that. And so all of these initiations happen. And basically what happens in a spiritual initiation is you are getting a major lesson. You're getting a major death. This was, these were all losses, losses of ideas I had about, about, you know, how things would be ideas about how, you know, maybe I just had, a, I think I had some major grief about the state of the world because, you know, I just never surround myself with any of those things. And then it was here right in front of my face in my daily life. And like Maui's a small place, you know? And so I just really learned a lot and I'm carved into the leader that I came to be. And now, because I went through all of that and like, it doesn't bother me anymore. Like people can talk shit and I'm like, you know what? I'm fine. 
I'm fine. And I actually expect it. And it's like, whatever, that's, that's part of it. And like, I even had this whole thing happen online in the comment section um, with spiritual women from Chicago, which was wild. Um, and yeah, I just have been initiated. And so I really want you to know, like, when things like that happen, it's not because you're on the wrong path. You are on the very, very right path. There's just, you're being called into a higher game, higher than you ever thought. And because of that higher game, like you can't learn that lesson. You can't learn these lessons at that higher level. You have to learn them here first. And so that's what a spiritual initiation is. It is a lesson, a loss and an integration period. Because I was like, oh, wow, like I've learned this lesson before. Like, why is it rocking me? Like, why am I, why am I like crying? And it's like, sometimes one of my teachers once said this, it's like, sometimes God will isolate you. Um, so you can really move through a bunch of stuff very quickly. And, you know, I did, I was isolated. Like literally I'm an island, on an island across the world. I didn't know anybody moving here. I now have people that I call Ohana and I'm so grateful for that. Um, but like, yeah, it was a lot. And so that doesn't mean I'm on the wrong path. That means I'm on the right path. I'm like, wow, what's about to happen on the other side of these initiations? Because um, it's about to get epic. It's about to get epic. And so my discernment, with men is su super, super high. Like people could say whatever they want about me. I know who the fuck I am. And you know, the people that matter, like none of that is even a thing. And then with money, I'm just like battening that down even more into my mission. Like I want to liberate as many people as possible from that program be because it's literally blocking new earth. It's literally blocking new earth. And so, yeah, I just, I've been carved y'all. I've been carved and there's been a lot of initiations and I'm sharing this podcast episode because, you know, with spiritual initiations, if you think about your life right now, you know, we're in eclipse season or whenever you are think when you are listening to this, if you are experiencing major initiations, like if you are you know, if there's resistance, obstacle, and spiritual initiations, you are on your hero's journey. And I don't want you to misdiagnose it because a lot of people, like, when you're in a spiritual initiation, by the way, be very discerning who you talk to because people can't hold it. And when you're in a fragile state, you don't need people that don't believe to get into your mind. Okay, because I know a lot of people, if they knew um, things that I have been initiated through, they would have told me to come home, just go home. I'm like, I am home. Maui's my home, right? They would say, go back to Chicago, go back, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, yo, I'm on divine assignment. I'm a child of God. You think I was raised, you think I came here to quit the moment turbulence shows up the moment we hit some chop the moment things get hard hell no I'm here to show you what I'm made of I'm here to turn you know anything into gold you give me enough time you give me enough you know resources you give me enough anything I'll turn it to gold I'll spin it to gold because that's what we're here to do as leaders for new earth so if you're in a spiritual initiation, if you're like going through major ego deaths, if you're going through like major loss, if you're like, oh my God, I've learned this lesson before, but like, why is it showing up? Like you must, you're in initiation and I don't want you to think that, hey, it's because you're on the wrong path. It's like, no, you're on the right path to your next major upgrade, but you got to keep going. And this is when you surrender into the initiation, like, and I, I prayed into these initiations. I'm like, okay, whatever's supposed to leave my life, let it leave. Whatever I'm supposed to grieve, let it leave. Um, whatever emotion I'm supposed to feel, whatever part of my ego is supposed to die, whatever previous versions of me need to be sacrificed on the altar, let it happen. Let it happen. And 
astrology can be really, really helpful and useful in these moments because I was looking at the astrology, of course, during everything. And I was like, oh yeah, like these things are happening in my chart. Like this, it's supposed to be a time of loss. It's supposed to be a time of initiation. It's supposed to be a time of just like a little bit of ouchiness, you know? So that's very, very, very important for spiritual initiation. So a spiritual, spiritual initiation doesn't mean it's not meant for you. It means it's really, really, really fucking meant for you. You must go through this death first. Okay. This major activation first. So that is this transmission. That is this episode. This is spilling the full tea on, okay, how do you navigate resistance, obstacles, and spiritual initiations on your hero's journey? And I really want you to be in relationship with these three things of like, okay, where's resistance in my life? And what is the major change that's on the other side of that, that I'm actually scared of? And how can I lean into it? Okay, what about the obstacle? Is there a boulder from God in my path right now? How am I going to move it? How am I going to show I'm committed? Okay. And get the skill set. And then the spiritual initiations is like, if you feel like you're dying, if you feel like everything's changing, if you feel like everything's being rearranged and you're being carved open, it's because you are. So just be in relationship with it. Let it die. Don't fight it. Ask yourself, what lesson am I supposed to learn? Like, like, can I let this go? How can I integrate this? Like when you're in conscious relationship with it, that's when it moves by quicker and with more ease. I'm not going to say it's easy, but it's like, it's like that feeling of like, if you feel like you have to cry for like a week and you don't let yourself cry, it just festers and you feel awful and it just is drawn out. Whereas what if the day you felt like you needed to cry, you just turned everything off, drew yourself a bath and then just sobbed. I did that. I did that more than once. I just sobbed. Oh, I just sobbed and sobbed and sobbed and sobbed. And a lot of it had to do with my inner child. Um, especially with the spiritual women, honestly, quote unquote spiritual. Um, so yeah. How is this showing up for you in your life? And I really invite you to lean into this as tools for your hero's journey ahead. Beautiful one. So a couple invitations. If you want to work with me as you traverse your hero's journey, there are two major ways you can do so right now. So one-on-one -on -one mentorship. I am really, really excited to be focusing on one-on-one -on -one mentorship really deeply for the rest of 2024. It's airy season. It's all about I am. And we are beginning a brand new six month cycle in your leadership. So if you want me as your one on one mentor, your coach, your healer, your personal astrologer, your personal breathwork facilitator, your personal shaman, go to the link in the show notes and apply. I am enrolling three new one on one mentorship clients. There are there's a range that you can choose from in terms of investment, in terms of like all the bells and whistles you can have with me. So just go apply if you're interested. That is your first step. And from there, we'll figure out what is correct for you if we're an aligned fit. So the other way that you can go deep with me in your hero's journey, this is for you if you not only want a deep dive into my modality of cosmic breathwork manifestation, you also want to get certified in my, my modality of cosmic breathwork manifestation. I'm leading my beta round of my certification in summer 2024, and there are four spaces left. This is the beta round. This is the first time I'm offering the certification. This is the lowest investment it will ever be because it is my beta round. So if this is you and you want to not only deep dive into this modality, but you want to get certified in it so you can share it as part of your gifts. Go to the link in the show notes and apply. I cannot wait to, to lead this and receive your application and just like, oh my God. Um, if you're interested in both, 
I have a bundle option for both. So you will have massive savings if you did both. So if that's you, just let me know on your one-on-one -on -one mentorship form or actually fill out both forms and that'll be, that'll be gravy. All right, my loves, go out there and just really tap into the hero's journey. Be in relationship with resistance, be in relationship with obstacles, be in relationship with the initiations. If you feel the call, I would love to support you in one-on-one -on -one mentorship. I would love to have you in my certification this summer. So go take action. Aries is about just do it energy. You got to initiate. You got to go for it. So if that's you, go to the link in the show notes. Go have an amazing day. Make a stranger smile because it's fun, because it charges the whole field, because it makes the world a better place. Remember to love yourself deeply. Cherish yourself because you are the love of your life. You are the thing. You are the asset. You are the shit. You are the bee's knees. You are beautiful. You are sexy. You are rare. You are amazing. You are powerful. So go out there and live like it. I love you so much. And I will see you next time on A Better World with Adrian.